nominated because it's extremely embarrassing. Uh, this is now the second time uh, since Snowden's revelations last year of massive, uh, the, the, the capture of Angela Merkel's uh, cell phone conversations. Um, three, so I'm not sure if it's Bild Zeitung, Sonne Abend, Spiegel, several sources are reporting that the actual uh, spying was against a parliamentary investigation into the NSA uh, scandal. So this is a, that's a huge breach of trust. And I think what's happening is they're trying to get to the bottom of it and trying to smooth it out. Uh, Merkel, in her own right, is facing opposition at home for going against what a lot of Germans see as their own national interest and by uh, kissing up to the United States. Right, I mean, in terms of their relationship, top German politicians said, I mean, if the suspension of the spying were confirmed, that would set the level of trust back to zero. How will the U.S. government respond to this? Right. This, uh, I, I don't know how, again, they have egg on their face. They'll deny it. They'll make some sort of promises. But the real issue is that uh, a strong ally like Germany, this is one of the main allies of the United States uh, coalition, and it shows that this is basically no more than like a mafia cartel. There are no permanent allies that the U.S. empire feels bound to respect or to, uh, to trust. They can do whatever they want. And if you think of this from uh, Germany's perspective, what about, say, uh, Russia or China or any of the other BRICS or global, global South countries that are waiting to uh, feel out whether they can trust the U.S.? It's a huge, huge setback. And I think it comes at exactly the wrong time. I mean, if we think about Ukraine, do you think the new allegation of American spying on an ally will have negative implications on the U.S. trying to get German help in its efforts to oppose Russian activity in Ukraine? Right. I can only hope so, because uh, the German position has been strained at best. They have not gone uh, along with the U.S. sanctions regime because they know that it will hurt their economy as much as um, as as much as uh, Russia's, or probably more so. They also are locked into this transatlanticist uh, uh, coalition, which doesn't help them or their economies. The U.S. wants to keep Russia out of Europe and Germany down in Europe and the U.S. in Europe. That was the whole founding philosophy of NATO. And it's, uh, it, they're asking a lot. It's a huge ask to ask the French and the Germans to go along with these, these really wrong-headed decisions and really awful uh, fascist regime that they put in place in, in Ukraine. And this, that's why I said this is exactly at the wrong time, because it pushes the Germans in the other direction. How can they trust this? Why would they go along with new sanctions? I think it's the kingpin. I think, and it, it is also with uh, Vladimir Putin and the Russian Federation as well. The European NATO basically has no reason to exist. There's, there's no. It, it the, the the crisis in Ukraine is an attempt to blow up uh, this idea of uh, Cold War version 2.0 and give it a new life. But the Germans have an enormous. Uh, in, in interest in aligning with Russia economically and using uh, Russian gas and Russian, you know, they're, they're uh, several thousand miles closer than their, what they call their American partners. And the Americans don't make things any easier by continually spying on them, by treating them like dirt, by not including them in uh, negotiations and back channel. Uh, they, they don't let them know what's going on, and now they're being treated like, uh, like, like colonies. That's, that's how colonizers treat their colonies. And I think that it's um, it's a shame for the U.S., but yeah, sorry, Daniel, uh, that's okay. Sure. Thank you.